Spokesman with Paul. I'm starting this video with my camera turned on so you can see that I am indeed a real live person. However, I know there are issues with the overlay behind me, and so I'm going to turn my camera off to keep that from being distracting. Here's the basic agenda. I'm going to provide some quick background information, talk about what was easy to pick up and implement, talk about why I had some problems and what those problem areas were, and then do some quick recommendations in the conclusions. My name is Martha Buckby, and I'm the D2L Administrator at UT Southwestern. Why did I start this journey with learn into the course Learn Postman with Paul? At UT Southwestern, we decided we wanted to pull the Brightspace data sets into our data warehouse. <clears throat> I knew this would be done via APIs, but I really knew nothing about APIs. When I asked the data warehouse team what they needed in order to pull the data into the data warehouse, they asked some questions that I couldn't answer. They asked how to connect to the data sets. What are the API calls? What's the name of the application? I knew I would have to create an application and that the API would connect via OAuth. I had previously looked at the valence documentation and been completely overwhelmed. Fortunately, I had remembered learning about a course called Learn Postman with Paul that D2L had created. This course is available in the D2L Learning Center under the Free Courses and Tools category. I've included the course icon and the URL here for quick reference. What was easy and quick for me to pick up? Lesson one is how to register the OAuth application in D2L. If you've ever had to integrate a commercial application into D2L, you may have gone through this process or something similar. This step will create the client ID and client secret that's used by the API to authenticate with your environment. Here you see an image of the register and application page. Paul walks through all of these steps. This must be done or completed by a D2L administrator. <clears throat> if you are a programmer and taking the Learn Postman with Paul course, and but you're not an administrator, you will need to work with an administrator in your organization to get the application registered so they can give you that client ID and client secret for your use in the APIs. I found the scope to be the most important field to get correct. However, if the first time you go through it, you do not get some information correct, <clears throat> you can go back and edit the application definition in D2L. The second thing that was easy for me was installing Postman. This was from lesson two. We're going to install Postman, download examples from GitHub, and import the examples into Postman. Oh, so the problems start pretty quick, it looks. The first problem I had was trying to run before I knew how to walk. I should have gone through the whole course once, following the instructions, before I tried customizing them for my own environment. Instead, I went straight to those videos. When I had problems, I rewatched the videos. I even looked at the video transcripts to make sure I hadn't missed something or misunderstood as Paul was going through. By skipping the text portion of the course, I missed some very important updates and key pieces of information. The most important piece that I think I missed was this statement. To start, you can use core, important lowercase letters only. This bolding is my emphasis, not from the course. This statement was so critical as I later learned, but I missed it because I didn't read the text of the course. I could have saved myself hours trying to figure out why the initial authentication attempts wouldn't work 
if I had simply read this statement and seen that I needed to have my scope in all lowercase. Also, by skipping the text portion of the course, I missed links to some very helpful Postman pages. The third error that I had was that I did not reach out to the community. Instead, I kept going around and around doing the same things over and over. I've heard it said more than once that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And I certainly felt crazy for quite a while. If I had simply reached out to the community, someone would have been able to quickly point out my errors. The community has a lot of people willing and able to help if you just ask. Another problem that I had was more a matter of not paying attention to the Postman interface. Every time I clicked on a collection or a request in a collection, a new tab would open. I unwittingly would end up with multiple tabs for the same item, whether it was a collection or a request in a collection. For example, I might make a change to a variable in the who am I request, then switch to another tab to check and make sure I was changing it to what I thought it should be, go back to the original tab and save the change only to later realize that when I switched back, I switched to a different version or a different tab for the same item. So when I had made my save, the change was not there and the change was not saved. On a happy note, my Postman implementation has been updated and I no longer get multiple tabs, but I left this into the presentation in case you had a, pro a similar problem and I wanted to make sure you were aware and you could avoid it. So problem areas. An initial problem that I had was that my implementation looked very different from Paul's and I had some orientation issues to work out. You can see in this image in the background, the black screen section back here is what Paul's screens look like in the videos. In the left column, you can see the collection and requests. In the center column is where you can see the configuration set up for the collections and requests. And then in the right column, you can see the results that display when you run a request. In my setup, on the left, again, you can see the collections and the requests in the collection. And on the right, in the top part of the screen, you can see the configuration. And then below that is where you see the results from the run. Initially, the results window was very small, and I didn't recognize that this is where the results were displaying. Another difference between the two setups is the menus and some of the quick icons as I would watch Paul click around on the screen to bring the console or the environment variables up. My screen did not look like that, and so I had to go figure out how to pull that information up. To get to the console, I had to click on the hamburger, and then on the view menu, and finally click on show Postman console. The shortcut for the console, in case you're curious, is Alt-Control-C. So the real problems began with the tokens. The tokens are the key to APIs connecting to D2L, and I had a very difficult time getting the tokens to work consistently. The first problem I had with tokens was the incorrectly defined scope. This had to be corrected both in D2L and in the Postman variable. And again, I go back to <clears throat> my comment, if I had read the text and seen that the scope needed to be in all lower case, I would not have had the problem where I used mixed case. Once I had the initial token, my next set of, set of problems were related to variables. When I got the initial token and refresh token, I put those in their respective environment variables. 
this had three problems. First, the get initial token collection, or I'm sorry, I had set the ID in secret in the environment variables, but the get initial token collection was trying to use those values from the collection variables. Once I updated the collection variables with the ID in secret, I was able to get the token and refresh token and updated the environment variables. However, when I ran a request, I would find that the request from a different collection was looking again at collection variables. <clears throat> so I would have to change the configuration for that request to point to the environment variables. <clears throat> the third problem I had related to variables was that after I had this working, the first two problems resolved, I ran the request a new access token in the who am I collection. And this created a new token and it updated the collection variables for the token, but not the environment variables for the token. And I had already changed the other collections to use the environment variables. So when I went back to run <clears throat> the requests in those other collections, I was getting an error that the token was incorrect because the request a new access token in the Who Am I collection had created a new token, but the appropriate set of variables had not been updated. The third problem that I had with tokens <coughs> was having multiple versions of the token. And in the scenario I just described where <clears throat> I had run the get a token from the who am I and it replaced the token it just added another token into postman and as I was trying to work out what the problem was I ended up running back and forth between the get an initial token and the get a token in who am I? <clears throat> and these kept stomping on each other. At one point, the system became so confused, I couldn't get the get initial token request to run at all, and I had to uninstall and then reinstall Postman. I eventually learned that if I needed to rerun the get initial token request, I would clear out all of the available tokens in the available token list and then clear cookies before I would attempt to get a new token. Let's talk some more about variables. Postman has three kinds of variables, global, environment, and collection. And I'm really only gonna address environment and collection variables because I didn't use the global and Paul doesn't really talk about them. So in this screen in the on the right on the left in the black box you can see I've got a environment defined as D2L bright space <clears throat> and there's a long list of variables. Next to these variables you'll see a check mark and that means that these variables are active. On the right side of the screen in the red box, you can see some variables for a request called get initial token. You can see some of these variable names match, for example, client secret, client ID, the OAuth scope. But you'll also notice that there are no check marks in the boxes next to those variable names. These variables in the collection have been disabled. When you are adding variables to the authentication section or in any other section for a request configuration, pay very close attention to what variables you are selecting. As you start typing the variable name, Postman will 
pop up with potential matching variables. You want to check what the scope is. Is it an environment, global, or collection variable? And then pay attention to the name. <clears throat> also, as you're, if you hover over the variable name, you can see what its initial current and current values are and what the scope is to clarify. If you're not sure which variable you have selected, you can hover over the variable name and you'll get a pop up that will show its scope, <clears throat> its name, and what its initial and current values are. Make sure that this data is what you expect it to be. This is how I eventually realized that I was updating environment variables, but the collection was using a local, or sometimes it was the other way around. The final problem I want to talk about is API versions. D2L updates the APIs fairly regularly. Two APIs that two API versions that you need to have defined in your application in your in the code the API code are the LE version and the LP version, where LE is stands for learning environment and LP for the learning platform. The versions that are used in the Learn Postman with Paul course have been deprecated and may no longer be supported. When you're creating your own configurations, make sure you are using supported versions. You can go to the valence documentation in order to find the current versions or the most, the oldest fully supported version. And there's, a, <clears throat> excuse me, another URL you can check for the API version history. The version history will tell you not only what the version numbers are, but what changes are being made in that version, what's being supported, what supports being dropped, et cetera. So some conclusions. Learn Postman with Paul is an excellent course and the GitHub collections are fabulous as a starting place. I recommend you go through the course once without attempting to follow along in your own environment and then repeat the course in and use your environment to go through the same steps that Paul's going through. Pay very close attention to the variables, especially in collections obtained from others. You want to make sure if you're using environment variables that any collections are also pointing to the vi environment variables. Learn Postman with Paul covers additional features and tools such as running test scripts and getting code snippets in different code languages. And this can be very valuable for programmers. So I definitely recommend making sure you go through that bit of the course. Also, in the text for module three, you will find there are some challenges that Paul has created. And these will give you a better understanding of how the system works and can give you some insights on how to modify the collections and requests for your own needs. I do think the most valuable recommendation, though, is paying very close attention to those variables. I want to thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you learned some information that will help you be successful in your API adventures, and hopefully you won't have to go around and around um, as I did trying to figure out why some of these things didn't work. If you have questions, you can contact me at martha.buckby at utsouthwestern.edu. I do strongly recommend that you ask the community as well, as there are members who are much smarter than I who can address your questions. Thank you so much.